Well, good evening. Hello, hello. Sorry for the little delay there. I forgot to do something. <clears throat> I've been using my phone and the hotspot on my phone. Uh, that's what I used last week to uh, <clears throat> get the stream. So you may see a little buffering for just a minute while I kind of get things tuned up here. Uh, how's the audio? Okay, it sounds like it's so-so. So let's see here. Keep your fingers crossed that things work out good here. Just a minute. Let me just double check a few things. All right. So hopefully, um, hopefully we'll be all right tonight. Um, <clears throat> uh, you may get just a little bit of buffering tonight. Uh, I apologize for that in advance. Uh, it's been my experience though that um, the uh, audio stays pretty solid. I am going to have to plug this phone in, so hang on for just a second. Uh, looks like things are sketchy, but uh, hopefully they won't be too bad. But yeah, I'm going to have to plug this in. Give me just one second here. I completely forgot about this. I'm spoiled from being at home and not having to deal with this stuff. So uh, if if everything is cool, uh oh, that's not the right cable. Well, hopefully we can make this work tonight. Uh, let's set this over here out of the way. Okay, so I did get a bunch of questions tonight. Uh, well, a couple, and then I was following up on one for Vincent uh, and Bus Life, and he was asking about the Ford Edge and why were they connect disconnecting the, the negative on the battery? And yes, it is to save the battery when you're towing four down. Excuse me, as we discussed last week, I think you would be just fine uh, to disconnect the positive if, if that's what you want to do. That wouldn't think, I wouldn't think that'd be a problem. And then also uh, running a charge wire from your RV to the rig would probably be a good thing too. So uh, with that, uh, let me just do one more couple things here and uh, see if I can um, save just a bit more bandwidth here tonight so that things uh, work good. Okay, so uh, let's go over to the chat and then we'll start answering a few questions. Uh, let's see, Gary's in from Arizona, George is in on his way south for winter uh, down in Buena Vista, Virginia. Uh, he paid four thirty-five a gallon for diesel. Yeah, that's about what it's running here in Arkansas. For those of you just tuning in, normally I'm in Idaho. I'm actually here uh, because my father's health has changed significantly and uh, I will be uh, moving him to Idaho. I've been here for the last uh, roughly two and a half weeks, something like that, might be three at this point, um, getting his house ready to sell. Uh, it's pretty torn up right now. I've got everything away from the walls, uh, and I've been scrubbing and, and painting, painted ceilings today, and uh, so hopefully um, I'll be able to get that done. Uh, let's see, Vincent RV Life's in, Tim Myers is joining us tonight, as is George, a.k.a. Dad. Um, uh, we were having a pretty good little uh, pre-chat there. Uh, usually we'll chat a bit in the chat window uh, before the stream starts. You're always welcome to join us there if you're so inclined. Robert Cummington's in from Tennessee. E.J. Weiss is joining us from New Jersey. Judy's in from Alabama. Judy, good to see you. Uh, she asked, how's it going? It's going fine. Uh, I finally got uh, a contractor and got them over here and they poured a new pad yesterday. Uh, right here behind me is a, or was a wooden deck that was rotten as rotten can be. And we got that replaced, so, uh, with a concrete pad. Um, okay, Tom Downey, yes, we're here. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, George says his the hotspot on their phone is their is is their connection on the road. Yeah, the internet here comes from Windstream. And it's DSL and it S U C K S. Uh, it's pretty rough. It looks like I'm losing a few uh, viewers. So is uh, it? It looks to me like things are a little choppy tonight. 
Um, so hopefully I can uh, keep this going. Um, Roundtown Scouter says, good evening from their new home in Carlsbad, New Mexico. Is, is that a real, like, sticks and bricks, Roundtown? Montana Boy, 3777, good to see you from Missoula. Normally I'm in Pocatello. <clears throat> uh, I think people are dropping, like, left and right. I can see the <coughs> people are dropping like crazy, but sorry. Uh, I could, I guess, try to go back to the other internet connection. Um, it may drop the stream, and uh, I don't. I'd rather not do that. But so nice to have you here, Montana boy. Love Missoula. Uh, been up there for a lot of concerts. Uh, Nathan Urich, Mr. Bolin. I have a 2014 Solitude and need to seal the entire roof before I start getting leaks. Do I have any recommendations? Absolutely. Uh, something we've talked about frequently on the channel, um, and that is uh, using uh, Henry's. Uh, truck cool is uh, a good one. There's two Henry's uh, that are silicone, and that's what you want to use is pure silicone, if at all possible. And then you want to make sure that the lap sealant. I'm going to go ahead and flip this. I mean, worst case scenario is <clears throat> if we drop, <clears throat> I will have another stream started instantly. Um, okay, so. Uh, just stand by here. I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do about flipping over to the other uh, internet connection. Usually it'll hold, uh, but if we drop, I will restart the stream and join everybody uh, back here in just one moment. So let me try that real quick. Keep your fingers crossed that it works. All right, so let's see. Hopefully. Okay, hang with me. No, that killed it totally. All right, I'm going to restart this stream, folks. Please stand by. Um, oh, well, wait, wait a minute here. Here we are, two minutes of chicken around. Things seem to be settling down a little bit. Sorry, I'm just trying to do what I can here to try to uh, save this stream, if at all possible. Um, but I totally get it's horrible. It looks like things maybe have settled down. Let me see here. Let me just check the audio real quick. All right, so maybe it's kind of settling in here. I'll keep our fingers crossed. You know what I should do, though, is I probably ought to put this up on the desk. <laughs> yeah, real professional. Man, having such a bad, you know. I miss being at home and on my, on my big, fat, gigabit Ethernet pipe. Uh, okay, it's a little better, so it seems to have settled in. Okay, cool. All right, let's roll with that. All right, so back to uh, Nathan Urich, if you're still with us, Nathan. Uh, sorry about the choppiness. I think we got your question answered. Uh, if, if you have any others, just throw them in the chat window there. Robert Covington asks uh, what to use to clean his TPO roof. Uh, seems like mold. I scrubbed with Dawn today. Helped, but still spots not as predominant. Rip out the old chlor chlorine bleach and go at it with chlorine bleach. You'll be fine. Just make sure that when you rinse the roof off, you rinse everything off as rapidly or as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, if not, the chlorine might leave a little streaking that you might have to scrub off the coach um, because it's going to take a little bit of the, you know, the. there's always the white oxidation. Okay, it looks like it's settled in and we're excellent, excellent, okay. There's always a little bit of white oxidation on those roofs, TPO, EDPM, any of the fiberglass roofs even will get this white oxidation on it. And uh, uh, so it'll come off when you hit it with the bleach. But yeah, bleach is the best way to get rid of mold, mildew, anything like that that might be on your roof. <clears throat> Another thing that works really well, but again, you have to rinse off almost instantly, is just ammonia. Uh, yellow ammonia happens to be my favorite. Uh, ammonia will kill the mold too, but the bleach won't take the uh, 
wax off your coach, whereas ammonia will. Uh, so you really need to rinse them both off pretty fast. So hopefully that uh, gets you going. Let's see, was there more to that? Help the still spots, not as prone. Yeah, just get out some chlorine bleach, you know, mix a half a cup and a couple gallons of water, use a brush and scrub on it a little bit. That should take it right off. Kevin, I hope you stuck with us. So happy to have you here from Missouri. EJ Weiss, I hope you stuck around. Uh, Scott Mogich is, is still here. Awesome, Scott. Uh, all right, see, uh, catching up Montana boy. We have a lot of Idaho people over here right now, actually, here in Lolo. And yes, you are chippy a bit here. Stops every 10 seconds. Wait a couple seconds, then back to it. So it looks like everything may have settled down. Um, fingers crossed. I think what had happened was is that uh, I was connected to my dad's Wi-Fi at 2.4 G, okay, and I was connected to my phone at 5 gig. And I think they were fighting with each other. And YouTube was really confused about who was talking from where. And so turning that off seems like it fixed it. There's always something new, right? Okay. Uh, let's see. Check in here. Okay. Uh, better, way better. Okay, cool. Nathan, can you please repeat? Yes, it kept breaking up on my end. Okay, Nathan. A good quality silicone uh, roof sealant. Henry's makes excellent one. Tropical comes to mind. Uh, and I've used it a couple times. Uh, you can go with the pure silicone. If you're going to keep the rig for a while, then I would go with the pure silicone, which I believe the Tropical is. There's another one. I forget what it's called. That isn't as pure of silicone. But either one of the Henry's works fine. And then around all of the seams, anywhere something comes through the roof, uh, you want to check your lap sealant, and you can get Dicor lap sealant. I highly recommend Dicor. I've used I use it exclusively. Uh, I've never had a lick of trouble with it. It's self self leveling lap sealant, and I'll take just a moment to uh, plug the uh, channel and tell you that you can get it on my Amazon store. There's a link to it in the description below. If you go through to Amazon uh, through that link, and you can go anywhere else on Amazon, pick up what you need. I'll get a very small commission, but you'll pay the same price. And every little bit helps. Uh, it really does. Okay, uh, back to the... Uh, uh, let's see. Vincent, did you get my response on the edge tow bar? Uh, four down towing, disconnecting the, the negative. The, the negative of the battery. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, Tom says, if your Jeep locks the steering wheel, you need to disconnect the battery and provide light circuit. Yes. Um... You know, in, in some of the newer vehicles, uh, I discovered this with the Jeep Gladiator that Rick bought to tow behind Rusty, my old Newmark Dutch Star, uh, that the ignition had to be turned on uh, to do anything with it. It was really persnickety. Uh, George, a.k.a. Dad, says, on the last fifth wheel uh, he had, he used soft scrub on a wet cloth and rinsed it as I went. Worked well. Yeah, and that would work perfect. Good suggestion, George, because it's got bleach in it. And the bleach is what you're looking for uh, to kill that mold. Two Feathers is in. Hi, Two Feathers. Nice to see you here tonight. You missed all the fun when, uh, you know, my head was getting chopped off every two seconds and four. Uh, Montana Boy 3777 says, Any ideas on getting parts for Bounder Motorhome? 1993, need window rubber seals and assorted items. Yes. Uh, there are several uh, companies out there that do the window seals for the classic rigs like yours. Uh, and I am trying to remember, um, just one second here, I got some for my truck camper rebuild from this place. Uh, let's see. Pellant, uh, uh, Pellant All righty. I will post this in the uh, chat for you there, uh, Montana boy. Just a minute here. Let me get back to the correct window. Okay, if you go there, Pellendent, uh, they've got the classic uh, seals for a lot of RV windows. 
uh, I got some for my truck camper from them and uh, I know that uh, another viewer of ours that has a truck camper that he's rebuilding or has rebuilt now and is actually using he got his window seals from them too and his was a 70s style 70s model so they're pretty good uh, uh, I would check them out on the other assorted items what are you looking for specifically I might be able to help you you can roll a rollo to your friend I forget the worst of that commercial and how it ends okay Vincent great glad to hear that okay couple questions that came in on some of my videos that I've got running on YouTube and uh, the first one I wanted to chat about was from Dawn uh, I think it's Bito and she says uh, I know this is a stupid question but is there anything you need to do to your RV for the winter if you live in it full-time I'm new at this and we just bought our first used RV fifth wheel in Tennessee we don't know much about it we need a roof over our heads so on and so forth uh, unfortunately she says also the people we bought it from were not come honest and hit a lot of problems uh, they just don't want any more problems with it so uh, Don for winter RV life uh, the only thing you really need to worry about is things freezing up now I was hoping you'd be on the stream so we'd know where in Tennessee you're from I know that Tennessee gets freezing weather but it doesn't hard freeze there so there's only a couple things you really need to worry about and that's like you should probably get yourself a heated water hose, okay? Available from my Amazon store. I'll quit plugging myself in a minute. And then um, the other thing is, is that in the winter when you're experiencing freezing weather, uh, you want to disconnect your sewer hose, okay? So dump your tanks, get that all squared away, and then disconnect that sewer hose. Make sure you drain the water out of it, all right? because that water can stand in that sewer hose and it will freeze and it can damage your sewer hose and you don't want that in the middle of the winter. And then the only other thing to worry about is inside of the water bay, okay, where the water connections are made up, you might need to do something for some heat in there. And what I would recommend is, and I wish I was closer because I have a trouble light here that would work perfect for you, but go to the parts store and see if you can get an old fashioned trouble light or check out garage sales and stuff like that. But try to find an old fashioned trouble light, one that takes in a screw in bulb. And get yourself a 100 watt bulb, okay? I know those are hard to come by too, but I got 20 of them here because I've been changing all the lights out in this house to LED. So I wish I was closer, I'd send you one. Uh, but if you could find an old incandescent bulb, they're almost impossible to find. But if you look around, you might come up with some and put that in your water bay and what that does is it puts just enough heat in that water bay to keep the incoming water connection from freezing and also it keeps the valves uh, from your holding tanks from freezing all right and that's just enough heat you wouldn't think a hundred watt light bulb would put off that much heat but they do I think 86 uh, percent they're 86 percent inefficient so you really like putting an 86 watt space heater in there but it works perfectly. I've used that in cold, real cold climates, and it works very effective. And then some other things you might consider doing is, you know, if it gets really cold, uh, you might look at getting something like, um, oh, uh, oh, come on, the Mylar bubble wrap. Help me out, folks. Come on, somebody remind me what they call that Mylar bubble wrap you put in your windows. Uh, it'll come to me in just a minute. Anyway. Some of that in the windshield, okay, is a really good idea. The windshield, sorry, is the largest glass surface area you have. And so reducing the amount of heat that goes through that is a really good idea. Uh, you could also just take and hang a blanket up there. Um, you know, uh, just put a blanket up there. And what, uh, reflect, thank you, Tim. Reflectix is the Mylar covered bubble wrap. Uh, it works really well, winter and summer. I used it in Tucson in the summer to help keep uh, the heat out of the coach. But either way, it works really good. Or just take a blanket, and what you can do is just take a blanket and some clothespins, get up in behind your, I'm assuming you have a curtain in the front, and just tape or clip that blanket uh, to your curtain. And that'll really help a lot. Just put a little bit more insulation power on that curtain and help cut down the amount of heat that goes through your windshield. And then the only other thing you might consider is an external propane connection 
there uh, it's a T that's a TEE -E pipe and what it allows you to do is it allows you to put on an external propane tank I, I don't know where you're at perhaps you're gonna be able to get propane delivered which is optimal but if not you can go get one of those 60 hundred pound cylinders or 20 pounders as far as that goes you just have to change them out more often and it's a T that goes in line right at your tank connection uh, on the RV itself and what it does is have an extension hose and then you can hook up external tanks and that's super handy I wintered in um, uh, Golden Colorado in 2013 I was there from basically October I finally threw in the towel in February I couldn't make it work well I could have but I was spending hundred fifty dollars a week on propane and so winter camping uh, in your RV is is really not too difficult um, Tennessee doesn't get extremely cold I mean you know uh, guys like me in Idaho and Montana boy you know up there in Missoula it's not unusual for us to see zero and zero is another thing it's really challenging a quick story I love telling these stories but this is one of my favorites I was uh, at Golden Colorado this was Thanksgiving weekend I had gotten myself a 60 pound uh, propane tank it stood about all oh, probably this high something like this and I had one of those teas I was talking about because I couldn't get propane delivered to my site and well I could but it was four dollars a gallon and this is in 2013 right and pro I mean I don't remember propane getting too expensive in the late winter I do remember it you know like I say it was 150 bucks a week but the long short story is is I got that tank filled the, before Thanksgiving because I wanted to make sure I had propane for over the weekend and on Sunday morning, uh, I got up and it was 24 degrees inside the coach. I had a Brita water pitcher on the counter and there was a crust of ice on the Brita water pitcher. And I'm thinking to myself, holy heck, how far did I turn the thermostat down last night? Well, what it turned out to be was is that the gas regulator froze up. <clears throat> I put that fresh tank on and opened it up and... I remember doing that Saturday afternoon and uh, so what I ended up doing was is I'm like how do I thaw this out now it's 21 below zero outside freezing ass cold so I'm, I'm trying to think you know how am I going to defrost this gas regulator and it took me like 20 minutes of you know kind of working through it in my mind as to what could have happened and then you know I'm like oh propane it was wet it's freezing cold. I froze up the gas regulator kind of thing. So I thought, well, maybe I'll take a hair dryer. At the time, I had hair. And, uh, you know, I think I had a, one of those blow dryers, I guess they call it. But what I ended up doing was taking, I had a heat pad. And I put that in a garbage bag. I went out and wrapped that around the regulator, plugged it in, went in and crawled back in bed, had an electric blanket, turned it up to 14, and laid there and shivered because, you know, I'd been out in the freezing cold for 25, 30 minutes trying to figure out what the heck had gone wrong. And uh, anyway, the long short story is, is that it defrosted and I had heat and everything was good. It goes to talk about the quality of my Numar, Dutch Star. And this is, I think, generally good for all the Numars, the upper end Numars anyway. I didn't freeze one hose. Didn't break one fitting. My, my toilet fitting didn't break. I didn't freeze up any elbows. Uh, nothing froze up. I got hella lucky, I will say. So the value of having that T <clears throat> is that I could swap tanks off. And of course, I kept some gas in my coach, right? I think I, have a, I had a 32, I think it was, a 32-gallon uh, propane tank. So I only used it down to about half before I started using the T setup. And so what I had was a normal bro, uh, you know, barbecue size, I, I think they call it a 20-pounder, uh, that I would put on while I was getting the 60-pounder filled. And that 60 pounder was costing, yeah, anywhere from, well, 80 to 150, I remember one week, uh, late in the winter. Uh, ultimately, I ended up buying an apartment in downtown Denver and living, living downtown Denver for a while. I uh, really enjoyed that. But yeah, um, that's my, one of my winter camping stories. I also have another story of getting frozen into my RV from an ice storm up on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And if, if I get to a spot where I have just a moment, I might try to go see if I can find some pictures 
I believe I still have uh, photos of that um, stashed somewhere here on my computer. I might take a minute. But it's half past the hour. This is usually when I do the cheap self-plug and channel commercial. And I invite you to give me that thumbs up if you like the channel and you like the content you're seeing. It really helps a lot, and I do appreciate that. You can support the channel by visiting my website, trbolin.com. A lot of great information over there. And or by visiting Amazon through the link in the description. Again, you go to Amazon, you can go anywhere else. I'll get a small commission, you pay the same price. I've got a special link there for Renogy where you get a discount there and also for RecPro. And I was going to say this to Montana Boy, RecPro has been an amazing resource for getting parts. Uh, they're down in Tennessee, by the way, uh, just where we were talking about. But they're Johnny on the spot and their stuff comes right out. Uh, they do have a lot of lead time on some items, but I bought a replacement uh, slide awning uh, for the Class A, for my Class A, for Rich. Uh, Rick, I'm sorry, he preferred Rick. His name was Richard. Um, anyway, um, uh, that I got from Rec Pro, and it was amazing. So, yep, Dakota Ridge, exactly, Jeff. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, great park. Kind of expensive in the summer, uh, but yeah, great, great park. All right, let's go back to... Um, Back to the chat and catch up. Uh, Montana Boy says, well, thank you for the information. God bless me. Uh, this is great. Yeah. Uh, happy to help. We've got a lot of old cronies out here, too. You know, Tom and Tim and, um, you know, George. And, and those guys have been RVing a long time. Uh, um, and so usually we can come up with something for you. We've got a pretty good resource here. Uh, let's see, uh, Tom Downey, Jeep doesn't lock the wheel, so I just provide a separate and separate light system. Oh, I wired a set of lights just like a trailer. Yeah, um, that's what I did with the Jeep Gladiator uh, when I did the tow bar install for Rick on his Jeep Gladiator. By the way, there is a video on my channel, uh, if you're curious, uh, of installing uh, the base plate uh, for the Jeep Gladiator for a Blue Ox tow bar system. Uh, I... I Skimmed over a little bit of setting up the trailer towing, uh, the trailer wire towing stuff. I also installed the Invisibrake, which is the breakaway system. And uh, I haven't produced the videos on that yet. I got busy working on the truck camper. And, and But I'll get to those probably this winter when I'm hurting for content. Do, 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 do. All right, so back to the chat. Okay, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Coop. Incandescent lamps are 100% efficient source of heat according to the classes i've taken yeah i th i think you're probably right kevin uh but they're a good little heat source when you need a little bit of heat in a space like a water bay two feathers any advice on mounting a 500 pound motorbike to my class c the hitch is only rated for 300 pounds i believe that is a class two rating my son wants to travel south with me this winter uh yeah you uh uh just go get a 2,500 pound hitch uh, and have it, uh, well, and have it put on. Uh, you might be able to do that yourself. Uh, you know, they have bolt-ons of those. Uh, but get a 2,500 pound hitch and put on there. You're not going to tow a car with it. By the way, if you do think you might want to tow a car with it at some point, then get a bigger hitch. But yeah, just go, you'll just have to go get a bigger hitch. Uh, any way you do it, you're going to have to mount to the back of the RV. And they've got these motorbike mount widgets, you know, that um, I've seen them that are spring-loaded. You know, you push the bike up onto it, and then you push it up on there, depending, I guess, on how big the bike is. But you got to be a one-stop son of a gun to push a 400-pound motorbike, even spring-assisted, up in the air. And then, of course, there's the hydraulic and electric ones, uh, really common. I've seen a couple of RVs here recently. Uh, of some people on Facebook asking questions that had pictures of them, and they had the motorcycle lifts on the back. But those are many thousands of dollars, so I think your best, a bit, I think your best bet, and it would really add a little bit of resale value to the RV eventually, is to just go get a, a hitch put on it. Um, uh, if you're going to tow with it at any time, just go with a five thousand pound hitch. Shouldn't be that expensive. Should be less than a thousand bucks. Installed by a qualified hitch installing company. Um, 
probably it might even be less than that. I'm trying to remember. I didn't put the base plate on my Subaru that I towed with my Numar, uh, and I think it was with the base plate was I want to say nine hundred, eight or nine hundred to put on uh, my Subaru Crosstrek. Uh, at the time, I didn't have the opportunity or the time to uh, try to put uh, the base plate on. Uh, I just didn't have a space to do it. Right, My apartment, I had a parking space off street, uh, but we were restricted. We couldn't work on our vehicles. It's all right. And yeah, that's another one, but a 300-pound hitch is pretty damn small. Uh, class two, I think, is twenty five hundred. Don't quote me on that. You may have looked it up there. Two feathers. Uh, his solution is to change the hitch to six hundred pound. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know what the difference is in cost between the two. I totally get that. You know, it might not make sense uh, to put. You know. I just can't think that a 5,000 pound hitch would cost you a thousand bucks and it would really change the value I think of, you know over the long term of your RV if you could tow a car with it at some point although that may not be what you want to do um, but that's a good suggestion you know to pull a small trailer and Jeff yeah Dakota Ridge RV Park in Golden man I'll tell you what the wind could howl there Right there, right off of the front range uh, is where that RV park is. I mean, it's the first exit af after you come off Floyd Hill there, uh, which is the big long hill that flows into Denver from the west uh, on I-70. Uh, Montana Boy says, I have an ASME tank and no room to install a T to retrofit an extended tank. Have you looked downstream, Montana Boy? You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be in right there at the gas uh, because the T, I mean, you might be able to go, you know, in, in away from the gas regulator and put it in. Um, let me think about that. You know, it's got to be in front of the regulator. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I do remember that I had to leave my bay door cracked for the propane. Um, mostly because the hose wasn't long enough to where I had the tank supported. Uh, I had taken and built this little support. I just bought some square metal tubing and a couple of C-clamps. And I had built this because I had to have it supported. Uh, they, you know, it wouldn't, it, they wouldn't let me stand it there without it having been supported. So I built this rig. It was really easy to do. I just put a piece of C-clamp and some square pipe right on the, uh, the slide rail uh, and because I never wrote, you know, did anything with the slides, and it worked perfect. I should have taken some pictures of that. I might have some. Uh, yeah, thanks for that reminder, Nathan, to hit that thumbs up. That's always a greatly appreciated. Um, Tom Bounty says, Mountain Air has a heated basement. We simply uh, keep the door closed. Yeah, the, the Dutch Star did too. There was a switch in the water bay and there's a vent right below the shower inside the coach is where mine was that would just suck uh, hot air, warm air from the coach into the uh, basement. Uh, and it only ran, of course, when the furnace was running. Or at least that's the way mine was set up. But that is a good suggestion too. Rec Pro, R E C P R O. If you look in the description of this video, uh, you'll see a link to Rec Pro, R E C P R O. Thanks, Tim. Perfect, yeah. Oh, perfect, yeah. Uh, George says they're right in the Shenandoah Valley with the Blue Ridge looking down on them. Yeah, I was at a place near Meadows of Dan, which is right on the Blue Ridge Parkway, uh, between uh, Roanoke and. Uh, Where's that big racetrack in Southern Virginia? What's the name of that town down there? Uh, but yeah, I was close. I was six, six miles north of Meadows of Dan is where I was staying on the Blue Ridge Parkway. That was 2013. I will eventually, hopefully, find those, pit, those pictures. Let me run over to um, 
Um, back to the chat here. Uh, oh, Vincent says Amazon has a 100 watt incandescent light bulb. So there you go. Uh, there's a source for your light bulbs. Excellent. Thanks, uh, Vincent, for looking that up. Uh, yeah, Tim, that's the way I say it too. He says, I'm not old, I'm just experienced. I've just done it. I've just made a lot of mistakes, right? That's what I say. I've just made a lot of mistakes. Uh, two feathers. Yeah, I, I thought about that, Tim. Thought it would be a 2000 investment. I told him he could haul it in his truck and 2000 could buy a lot of gas. That's true. Uh, I have not installed a ready brake, I installed the Invisibrake. Uh, I did it twice because I thought that it was the best braking system. I mean, you put it in, you never had to mess with it again, right? And once I got it set up, I tested it every once in a while. Uh, other than that, it was an amazing piece of equipment. Hi, Robert Black, 1911. Good to see you in. Oh, yeah, Tom Downey says he has a spare tow bar. It's free. Contact me. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Two Feathers is up there in the northwest. She's in Spokane, so she's not that far from uh, Whidbey. Uh, Tom Downey, I have a spare tow bar. Okay, uh, catching up here. Uh, Kevin Coop asks, has anyone else used Five Star Tune? Five Star Tune? Five Star Tune on their gas motorhome or pickup? I have not. We'll watch the chat here. Oh, there you go. Roundtown Scouter. 100 watt rough service bulb. There you go. But you have to find an old trouble light. Okay? They're perfect. They have a little hook. You can hang it. You can set it up so that it's not touching anything. Uh, it's got a shield on it. Yeah. Old fashioned trouble light and an incandescent light bulb. Tim Myers. Okay. Class 2 is 3500. Okay. Thank you, Tim. And 300 is the tongue weight. Yeah, um, does his bike weigh more than 300 pounds? It must be a Harley, huh? Oh, we got to say this. Sorry, Sand Van, for some reason, uh, you guys got flagged for... I'm going to add you to my safe posters list uh, so you won't get st stung again. Hi, the Sand Van has a great channel you might want to run down and check out. Uh, they are on YouTube, but they are down under in Australia. And, yeah, they've got a great uh, great channel. Uh, Tim figured out that, uh, you know, gin is horrible. And I reminded him it was great for cleaning your eyeglasses. Montana boy, Tim. He's 22 uh, with 40 years experience. Well, Montana boy, you got a lot to learn. Uh, but it's fun learning it. Trust me. I enjoy every minute of it. I was thinking about that when I was working on this week's video for the truck camper, how much I had enjoyed uh, the project, and I've actually started thinking about what I might do next. Oh, okay, so you've already got like a class three hitch, uh, but it's the tongue weight. Yeah, um... I don't know. Uh, like I say, I've seen, um, you know, uh, specific motorcycle mounts that still have to mount underneath to the frame. Um, I don't know how they work with the tow bar in there. Not much experience. Tim Myers says he has a stay in play, very similar to the Invisibrake. Yeah, cool there. The Invisibrake has a pneumatic cylinder that's all electrically triggered and, and has breakaway service. So it's it's pretty good. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, Montana Boy asks, how do they rate Class A, B, and C motorhomes? Uh, class B are typically like your Sprinter vans, your Transit vans, your Mercedes. The van lifers, they are all in basically Class Bs. A Class C is usually up to 32, 34 feet. They can be gas or diesel. Uh, they're typically built on a truck-like chassis. Uh, not a semi-like chassis, which is typically what a Class A is built on. Um, most Class A's are built on, uh, you know, like a big GM 
big GM chassis with big GM motors. Spartan would be the specific company that's building those chassis today. And then you got Freightliner. Uh, there's also workhorse out there in some of the older rigs. So you're on, you have an older rig. You might have a workhorse chassis. <clears throat> Excuse me, a workhorse chassis. A workhorse chassis, I'll get it out. Uh, that's GM from way back, you know, in the 90s, like, the, like you said, the rig you had. Um, so, and then class A's can go up to like 45 feet. Uh, they're usually, they usually start at like 36. There's a lot of argument on this channel about where class A breaks off from class C. Uh, but usually class A's are built on a heavy truck or bus type chassis. Um, you know, Freightliner, uh, it's an actual Freightliner truck chassis it's built on. Um, and then there's Super C's, which are built on an actual Freightliner, like truck chassis uh, as well. But it's like a real truck chassis, so it has the truck cab. And then the whole back of it, however big it is, would be like your living space. Um, yeah, tow bar is Falcon. Okay, uh, Kevin Coop, he says, on his 6.8 V10 uh, Class A, 35 horse increase and over 100 foot pound torque at the wheels. Change, changes the trans setting and getting 10 to 12 percent mileage increase. Wow, so what are you running on that V10? Uh, are you getting nine? That would be good. How big is your rig? Oh, let's see. Uh, Kevin, did you tell us how big your rig was? So we can call you out if we think you're bragging. Of course, I'm teasing you. But uh, okay, I don't see it there. Yeah, what rig do you have? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, we got you, uh, too, uh, tongue weight. Georgie says, I used to use the trouble light under the hood of the car next to the battery before I had a garage with a heavy old quilt draped over the hood blocking the radiator. 10 degree car and all we started. Yeah, that's, uh, I know a lot of people, uh, I've done that on oil pans. I had an old VW Bug, you know, a 69. Yeah, I think it was a 69. Uh, and I would put a trouble light under the oil pan to get it to start and tend below weather. Of course, you still froze your butt off because those, you know, VWs were uh, heated from the air. They were air-cooled, and at 10 below, they never got warm enough to get you warm. You froze your butt off all the time. Uh, yeah, use an air cylinder to operate the brake. Yeah, this is, uh, this is air, but it's electrically uh, driven. So it's electrically signaled from the brake lights on the truck um, to uh, the Invisibrake. You know, it's just sitting in line with the trailer tow lights that are already on the tow vehicle that you install and, you know, uh, to tow legally. Uh, you're welcome, Montana boy. Uh, Tom, yeah, air cylinder. Tim says... Uh, uh, re recommending that two feathers check out 800 pound motorcycle scooter carrier two inch tow receiver trailer hauler hitch <sighs> okay tim yeah perfect oh kevin he's got the jayco 18 jayco alante 29 foot went from 7.7 .7 to 8.4 at 70 and also no more 75 mile per hour limiter interesting 70 to 75 gotcha uh interesting yeah um That's pretty good. 8.4. That's not bad. What's your weight? Have you, uh, I'm sure you know what your weight is. All right. I had one more question come in. I better not forget to get to that. Uh, let me just sit up over here real quick. And uh, Susan Sims, Seams, S-E-M-S. -E uh, she listened to the video. She's talking about, she has watched this holding tank, you know, stopping the stink. You know, easily stopping holding tank smells uh, in your RV. Uh, clearly my most popular video. Uh, she says, uh, uh, she's been stationary in her 2005 31 fifth foot fifth wheeler for eight months. And she had a septic company drain the black tank twice. I don't know how much this tank holds. I'm guessing maybe 40 gallons, uh, Susan. Um, it would be easy enough to look up. You could just Google 2005 insert your uh, rig model um, 
31 foot you don't have to put fifth wheeler and ask for specification so Google 2005 insert your coach name 31 foot uh, trailer specifications and it will bring you up a sheet and show you how big of all your tanks your fresh your black your gray, all of those will be listed in the specifications for that rig. Uh, she says, I use, uh, oh, and she doesn't trust the galley readouts, okay, and they're probably not working correctly. Uh, she uses cameo toilet pods all the time and still smells like a sewer. People gag when they visit me in my RV. I'm a single female learning about RV life and not liking it one little bit. The septic company told me my black tank has a leak, but I can't find anyone who can come on site and replace the tank. Guys don't want to work on old RVs, obviously. I'll try the Borax and Dawn method, but really need to have this tank fixed. Anyone in West Palm Beach? Thanks. She wishes I could come and help. I don't know if I would do the black tank myself either, Susan. That is a lot of work. I don't know that it's going to be particularly nasty. I suppose it probably would be, you know, because you're breaking sewer lines. I, you'd want to flush the hell out of it for sure before you go tearing into it but she wants to uh, um, I want to suggest a couple things Susan uh, first since it sounds like you're living in full time uh, I would do this for about three or four weeks and so what I would do is I'll fill the tank half full of water both tanks add your borax and your dawn in the black tank add your bore at your orange cleaner or your concentrated degreaser and the borax to the gray tank and then use them like normal till they fill but what we're doing is we're soaking that tank and so what we're trying to do is is that over the years a bunch of crud is accumulated on the walls of that tank and the only way we can get it out is to soak it out and so by adding that extra water and then yeah you have to dump your tanks more often but try to fill them up fairly full. Now, I know your gauges aren't working, so you're going to kind of have to just, you know, do it by feel. Um, but you'll get to a spot where you'll be able to at least figure out where the gauges are working. Uh, but it's going to take a few cycles of that. Um, but it will eventually clean them up. Uh, and first, they will stop stinking. They should stop stinking almost instantly when you use the borax and dawn. Okay, that that's just a given. Uh, it may take a couple cycles of soaking that tank, flushing it, um, but it will fix it. I guarantee it. You can look through the comments in the video. I haven't even looked lately. I mean, I see your comments come in. Uh, you know, I'm not saying this to you know sound trite, but uh, let's see. It's got almost a almost a million views. Sorry. And uh, about 2,700 comments. And I've answered every one of them. All right, let me jump back over here to the stream. I hope that helps. Uh, anybody with a stinking tank, uh, that the key is to soak it. Uh, the more you soak it, the faster the um, tank monitors are going to start working again. Yeah, Montana boy, uh, there's nothing wrong with Happy Camper. It works. But what my ex, but what my casual observation has shown me, this is just by reading comments uh, in the videos that I've got from my video and also reading comments on the public forums, you know, over at IRV2. I'm on a Facebook forum, a couple of Facebook forums that I watch and, and see. And the Happy Camper doesn't always keep your tank gauges working properly. Um, it does stop the smell, absolutely, but it's been my experience, at least from what I've seen online, that it may not be really good at um, keeping your gauges, your tank indicators working. Uh, but yeah, the gray tank, the treatment that I gave you for the gray tank works perfectly. Uh, I think you'll find the black tank works really good too, but Happy Camper is great. I'm not knocking it. And yeah, the the borax and dawn is super cheap. I haven't figured it out with inflation. I ought to do it. It's on my list of things to do is to update that video here. You know, probably this fall and probably release it. You know, next spring. 
uh, because uh, it's a little dated and I've learned some more stuff uh, that has improved the product or improved the process. It just flat out works. I don't know what I can tell you. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you the facts and just go read the comments. Um, yeah, good. So you did it right, Montana boy. He says, um, yeah, he was referring to treatment. He still has a lot of orange stuff and followed my mixture, you know, borax and orange cleaner in the gray, in the gray tank. Uh, needed to get the tank really clean. First drove it around a bit to help clean it. That's called the road scrub. And yeah, it's a very effective way, um, you know, uh, fill that tank with the orange cleaner and the borax, go out and go for a ride. Don't fill it all the way full. Fill it like two thirds of the way full because you want that water really sloshing around hard and take lots of turns and curves. Find the find a not straight road in Arkansas and I can give you a million of them. <laughs> I'll quit arguing or complaining about that soon. Anyway, um, yeah, hit the thumbs up. Thanks, Round Town. All right, we're coming up on eight o'clock and I usually try to keep these to an hour. I'm really kind of tired tonight. I think I was awake at 3.30 today and I didn't get much of a nap. Uh, just, did I miss anything in the comments? I don't think I did. But yeah, so uh, let me just cycle over here. Every once in a while, uh, on while we're on the stream, I'll get a comment on the actual video. So we'll just run over there, but nothing like that tonight. All right, folks. Well, I'm glad we got things sorted out. Um, Tom Downey says the problem is she doesn't move the trailer. Yeah, it doesn't matter, Tom. If you use the treatment, do the soak, it works. You don't have to do the road scrub. The road scrub just accelerates the process. The road scrub just helps mush, you know, get that sloshing around, and it helps, you know, get that current moving in that tank and gets shit broke up. Oops. Well, that's what we're talking about. So, I guess it's okay in this case, uh, and get it out of that tank. Thanks, Robert. Fall is coming. Yes, it is. Montana boy, yeah, the crap that came out of that gray tank was bad. I thought I had the black tank dumping. Can't believe how bad gray was and clumps of mold type stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah, works really good, doesn't it? Do it again. You'll be happy. Thank you, Robert. He's, he's holding his own. Uh... Just a quick update, you know, I'm here in Arkansas because I'm, you know, getting my dad's house ready to sell and doing all that. Um, I think I finally found a non-medical or non-emergency medical transport that I can afford uh, to get him up to Idaho uh, so I can get this wrapped up and get out of here. I don't want to be here this winter. I don't want to leave my home in Idaho uh, for winter. I didn't winterize it and I would want to train water lines and do a bunch of other stuff uh, if I wasn't going to be there all winter. And so, uh, and winter is just around the corner in Idaho. Um, although it's been beautiful, it looks like. Uh, but yeah, it won't be long before we're, you know, in the 40s and 30s and freezing overnight. So I want to get home and make sure I got my house ready to go. Uh, I haven't missed anything, have I? Okay. Thanks, Tim. Robert. Round town, Montana boy. Hope to see you back next week. Always happy to get your questions. Uh, Kevin, uh, new face, new name. Glad to see you in here. Um, hey, and by the way, if you want to send me pictures of your rig so I can share them with the with the chat uh, folks, uh, send them to trbolin, B-O-W-L-I-N, at gmail.com. And uh, I'm sh I'll share them on the stream. Uh, we do that every once in a while. We did that for Two Feathers here a while back. Uh, one of our regular viewers down in Tucson, uh, we showed his rig off right after he got it, like brand new. He had just driven out to, I think it was North Carolina to get it. Um, yeah, Tom says it's 43 overnight in Whidbey. So yeah, fall is fall and winter are coming to the Northwest. All right. Thanks, everybody. I greatly appreciate your support of the channel and your joining me for these on Tuesday nights at 7. Uh, we'll be back next week on... I don't think anything will change. Um, I'm going to try to be out of here in two weeks, uh, maybe two and a half, uh, depending upon what I do with the furniture and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I'll probably be back home in Idaho towards, well, hopefully before Halloween. That's, that's the goal. All right. 
We'll look for any more last minute questions. If you do have a question, throw it over in the chat. Uh, don't forget to support the channel by visiting my Amazon store through the link in the description. Uh, that's always appreciated. Uh, check out my website. Uh, I've got social media links in the description of the video as well. But I think we'll call that good. Thanks everybody for watching. I do appreciate it. Until next week, peace. Good night.